Okay, we're going to have a look at Christchurch Bay this afternoon and a quick overview of this case study, all of the processes that are going on uh, right the way along the bay from uh, Hengistbury Head over here on the western side, uh, all the way around the bay, the different erosion that's taking place, the defences, all the way to this depositional feature of a spit at Hurst Castle Spit at the end on the east side of the bay. So, as a quick reminder, prevailing wind in this part of the world is from the southwest, and that results in longshore drift moving in this direction from the west to the east. Remember, longshore drift, we've got this swash and backwash, zigzag action all the way along the coast that leads to the movement of material from the west to the east. And that's crucial because that informs and uh, explains why they've done all the different bits of protection along this coastline. So we're going to zoom in first of all and have a look at the high cliff area of uh, the coast. And I've got that up here on a screenshot from Google Earth. So this is high cliff. Remember, at high cliff, we've got high value properties uh, up here um, just above the cliff line properties that need to be protected. This is a, a wealthy area of Hampshire. And so in terms of protecting it, they've placed in these groins to prevent the movement of material along the beach, to try and build up the beach in these areas as a way of protecting the cliff line behind. Really, really important. They've worked quite well. And you can see in this location here that on this side of the groin, the western side, there's a much wider beach than there is on the downdrift side to the east. So these groins here are working well in building up and maintaining the beach. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more closely. So I've just come across to this screenshot where we can see some other aspects of this protection. We've got the groins, as we mentioned, protecting, um, preventing longshore drift, building up the beach. But behind that, we've got a row of boulders that form some kind of protection at the back, some barrier protection, so rock armour, um, although it's a very thin layer, at the back of the beach, preventing uh, erosion at the base of the cliff. But if you look very closely along the cliff line, or the, the land that we've got here, you've got these lines all the way along, and these are areas of cliff drainage that they've put in. Remember, these cliffs are very, very soft material, clay and sands that would slump if they were um, not protected. And what they've done is they've put in drainage channels all the way through the cliff, the whole length of this area, to let water out so that it doesn't build up and uh, then slump. If we move along um, a little bit, so we've, we've looked at this area of High Cliff here. We're now going to move on just beyond High Cliff to the area of Naish Farm. So that's on a diagram up here. We can see straight away uh, the damage that's being done, the erosion that's taking place in this area. The whole cliff is slumping away. And notice there's no protection at all, no groins, nothing there. And as a result, the longshore drift is carrying the material away off this area of coastline. The beach is tiny. Look at the width of that beach, really, really small. And so at high tide, when the storm waves are coming in during the winter, they're going to be eroding the base of the cliff, causing the cliff to slump. No drainage either, so the slumping's taking place. So you might ask, why are they not protecting it? Well, the value of the land above it isn't the same as it was over in High Cliff. We've got um, areas of um, mobile homes which can be moved, um, and also it's not the same value. So this is a, just a zoomed-in shot of Nash Farm, and you can see the different layers and the slumps that have taken place over the years in this area. Moving a bit further on down the coast, we come to the area of Barton-on-Sea. And we're just going to zoom in on this area because this is probably the most famous area of protection along this stretch of coastline. And they've just about done everything they possibly could to protect this part of the coast from erosion. Again, fairly high land value above. You've got the town of Barton-on-Sea. Um, the areas at most risk clearly here are the cafes and the shops. Um, the house is a little way back, but the cliff um, has been stabilised in a number of ways. Notice we've got groins to try and build up a beach. Where that's not been very effective, and you can see it's not been brilliantly effective because the 
size of the beach here isn't huge, they've had to place rock armour in. Very expensive stones, uh, large boulders from uh, Norway, imported, dumped in front of the cliff to stop the waves eroding the base of the cliff. Within the cliff, you can see they've got cliff stabilisation as well. And they've also, although you can't see it brilliantly on this, um, they've put in sheets of steel into the cliff to stop any slumping taking place. Huge amount of expense to protect this part of the cliff. Um, finally, if we follow the longshore drift all the way along the beach, along the, the Christchurch Bay, we get to the eastern end where we have Hurst Castle. This is where we did our field work this year. The spit itself, um, with the longshore drift coming in this direction because the prevailing wind is this way so swash and backwash zigzag its way along but notice the recurved uh, end here the recurved end to the spit because occasionally the winds will change direction causing the spit to curve round really uh, really really important stretch of coastline for our case studies high cliff Barton on Sea, Nash Farm in between, and just finished by putting up a diagram that was done in my year 10 lesson using the Play Doh today. Uh, I think this was Charlie and Ryan, so good effort, lads, in explaining that. I'll leave that on the screen to finish.